Our life is frittered away by detail. Simplify, simplify. Henry David Thoreau Hi, and welcome to a brand new section, Classes, Roles and Profiles. In this section, you will explore the details of Puppet Classes. You'll learn how to create defined resource types and how they differ from classes. Later, we'll see how to organize your Puppet code using the concepts of nodes, roles and profiles. Starting with the first video of the section, Classes. We've come across the class concept a few times so far in this course without really explaining it. Let's explore a little further now and see how to use this key puppet language building block. Let's begin with the class keyboard. You may have noticed that in the code for our example NTP module, we use the class keyboard. If you're wondering what the class keyboard does, the surprising answer is nothing at all. Nothing, that is, except inform puppet that the resources it contains should be grouped together and given a name, pbg underscore ntp, and that these resources should not be applied yet. You can then use this name elsewhere to tell Puppet to apply all the resources in the class together. We declared our example module by using the include keyboard. Let's see an example that shows a class definition, which makes the class available to Puppet, but does not yet apply any of its contained resources. Here's a declaration of the class name, class. A declaration tells Puppet to apply all the resources in the class and the class must have already been defined using include class name. You may recall that we used higher automatic perimeter lookup mechanism to supply perimeters to classes. We'll find out more about this shortly, but first, how do we write a class that accepts perimeters? Let's see declaring parameters to classes. If all a class does is group together related resources, that's still useful, but a class becomes much more powerful if we can use perimeters. Perimeters are just like resource attributes. They'll let you pass data to the class to change how it's applied. Here's an example showing how to define a class that takes perimeters. It's a simplified version of the pbg underscore ntp class we developed for our ntp module. The important part to look at is in the parentheses after the start of the class definition. This specifies the perimeters that the class accepts. String tells Puppet that we expect this value to be a string and it will raise an error if we try to pass it as anything else, such as an integer. And version is the name of the perimeter. Finally, the installed part specifies a default value for the perimeter. If someone declares this class without supplying the pbg underscore ntp underscore params version perimeter, Puppet will fill it in automatically using this default value. If you don't supply a default value for a perimeter, that makes the perimeter mandatory. So Puppet will not let you declare the class without supplying a value for the perimeter. When you declare this class, you do it in exactly the same way that we did previously with the Puppet Forge modules, using the include keyboard and the name of the class. Classes can take more than one perimeter, of course. And this example shows how to declare multiple perimeters of various types. To pass perimeters to this class, add higher data like this. Let's look closely at the perimeter list. The first perimeter is of boolean type and named start at boot. There's no default value so this perimeter is mandatory. Mandatory perimeters must be declared first before any optional perimeters, that is perimeters with a default value. The version perimeter we saw in the previous example, but now it's a string one instead of a string. What's the difference? A string one is a string with at least one character. This means that you can't pass the empty string to such a perimeter, for example. It's a good idea to specify a minimum length for string perimeters, if appropriate, to catch the case where an empty string is accidentally passed to the class. The final perimeter, service state, is of a new type, enum, which we haven't come across before. With an enum perimeter, we can specify exactly the list of allowed values it can take. If your class expects a string perimeter, which can only take one of a handful of values, you can list them all in an enum perimeter declaration and Puppet will not allow any value to be passed to that perimeter unless it is in that list. In our example, if you try to declare the pbg underscore ntp underscore params to class and pass the value bogus to the service state perimeter, 
you'll get this error. Just like any other perimeter, an enum perimeter can take a default value as it does in our example. Here it is running. Moving on to automatic perimeter lookup for higher data. We've seen that we can use higher data to pass perimeters to classes. If we include a class named NTP, which accepts a perimeter version, and a key exists in Hira named NTP version, its value will be passed to the NTP class as the value of version. In general, Puppet determines perimeter values in this order of priority, highest first. Now let's see perimeter data types. You should always specify types for your class perimeters as it makes it easier to catch errors where the wrong perimeters or values are being supplied to the class. So far, we've encountered the data types string enum and boolean. Take a look at some more. First is content type perimeters, types which represent a collection of values such as array and hash or their parent type collection can also take a perimeter indicating the type of values they contain. For example, array integer matches an array of integer values. Then there are range perimeters. Most types can also accept perimeters in square brackets, which make the type declaration more specific. For example, we've already seen that string can take a pair of perimeters indicating the minimum and maximum length of the string. Most types can take range perimeters, Integer 0 matches any integer greater than or equal to 0, while float 1.0, 2.0 matches any float between 1.0 and 2.0 inclusive. We also have flexible data types. If you don't know exactly what type the values may be, you can use one of Puppet's more flexible abstract types, such as variant, which specifies a list of allowed types. For example, Variant string integer allows its value to be either a string or an integer. So guys, that's all about classes.